Section three of chapter seven is functions involving E. <laughs> now, E is uh, what we call natural base E, and this number uh, is a phenomenon in math, kind of like pi or, uh, or the imaginary number i, and it's actually named E after, um, after Leonard Euler. So if you discover a number, then you get to name it after yourself. So there you have it. So that's where the E comes from. And uh, this number is, if you plug it into this 1 plus 1 over n to the n power, if you'll recognize that from the compound, uh, compound interest formula, uh, if you plug, if you take that in, and as that n approaches infinity, so the bigger that n gets, the bigger this number gets that you plug in, the closer you get to 2.71828182818288. And it's an irrational number. It just keeps going and going and going. All right. So this, this, all, all you need to know with all of that is this is actually a real number close to 2.72. All right. And it, we call it the natural base E. All right, so that's all you have to know with that, but that's a little bit of history and where it comes from. Um, we use the letter E just like we would with a pi or an i or even an x. So if you're simplifying, uh, if you're simplifying expressions with the E, the same rules apply as do with your any variable. So if you're taking e to the ninth power times e to the sixth power, you simply add your exponents, so you would get e to the fifteenth power. So if you multiply two bases that are the same, then you add their exponents. Uh, if you're dividing, then you simply follow the rules for dividing. You're going to subtract those exponents, and you're simply going to reduce this. So uh, 60 and 12 can reduce. 12 is, uh, or 60 is 12 times 5, so the 12s can cancel, and you simply have 5 in the numerator. And then um, 8 minus 3 gives you 5 e's left on the top. Do you remember doing that? Reducing, uh, reducing the, uh, the exponents if the bases are the same. So what you end up with is just 5 e to the fifth power. All right? So if you don't, if you don't understand where I came up with all of that, make sure you ask me in class or look back in your book for some examples. All right, this is just simplifying, just simplifying that fraction. Um, all right, well, what about something a little more complex, something that looks like this? Well, we can do this too. You're gonna take the three power through the whole thing. So you're gonna take the third power times the negative 10, so negative 10 times negative 10 times negative 10 is negative one with one, two, three zeros. And you're gonna have E to the 3 times 5 is negative 15 power, e to the negative 15x power. So do you see where I did that? So make sure that you take the, the, the exponent on every part of what's in that. Sometimes you forget to take it times the, the constant. So then when you do that, this negative power, a negative power, remember, flips that part down to the denominator. So you have negative 1,000 over e to the 15x would be the simplified form of that. Um, all right, now with that e, remember I said that that is equal to 2.72. Uh, it's an actual number. So you can come up with an actual answer. And I had a calculator here. I was going to pretend, you know, punch buttons even though you can't see what I'm punching. Um, but what we're going to do, you can put into your calculator, you can do that E, and um, if you've got a graphing calculator, it's on that. There's an E to the X power. Uh, if you turn your, if, turn your iPhone uh, over to, the, to, to its side, then you have the E to the X power. The way you plug that in is you have to put the exponent in first. So the way you would, uh, the way you would put this into a calculator to figure E to the sixth power is simply you'd press 6, and then you press the e to the x power. And if you do that, you should end up with this number, 403.429. So do it right now and make sure that you understand where it comes from. So 6, and then press uh, e to the x, and then equals. And you should end up with this number, uh, or a number close to this, and I rounded it. All right, the same thing here. If you've got e to a negative exponent, all you're going to do is you're going to put in 0.28 and then press your plus or minus key to make it negative, so negative 0.28, and then you'll press the e key, and that should give, and then equal should give you 0 0.756 if you rounded it. 
Okay, so play around with some of those. Look in your book for some examples to make sure that you're getting them right, um, and make sure that you can you know what uh, what sequence to punch those buttons into. Uh, if your calculator is different from mine, if it's not um, the the your your device flipped sideways. Uh, if you've got a graphing calculator and it's not, if if you can't easily see it, bring it to class and let me let me look at it with you, and we'll find that e to the x power. It's really simple. You just push push it in. All right. So enough with simple. Let's make things difficult. Don't you know? Here we go. So we're going to graph these natural base exponential functions. So graphing functions with e is uh, is simply we've got here's our here's our our base uh, equation, y equals a times e to the rx power. So any equation that looks like this, your, uh, your graphs are going to look like this. And so what happens is this, is this, is this, is this. Sometimes I catch what I'm repeating and sometimes I don't. So if, you're, if your a is greater than zero, so if you've got a positive, positive e or positive number in front of your e there, and if your if your um, exponent is is greater than zero, if your exponent is greater than zero, then you're going to have an exponential growth um, exponential growth uh, function, and it's going to go up just like just like those functions that we graphed in the last section uh, where they went upward. Uh, and then the exponential decay are going to come downward just like we just graphed, and those you're going to recognize because the the exponent will be less than zero. So if your exponent is negative, then it's going to come downward. Because what happens is if you have a negative exponent, remember it flips it to the denominator. So that's why it's getting, it's getting smaller and smaller instead of larger and larger. And on all of these, your domain is going to be all real numbers because we can go, we can do, your x's can go as far as you want them to go. So the domain is all real numbers, but the range has a limit. So the range is going to be y is greater than whatever your asymptote is. And so, um, so in most cases, it's going to be just y is greater than 0. But once we get into the more, uh, more complex uh, equations, that asymptote is going, to, is going to shift. And so then that's going to be your new uh, range. Let's look at some and see what we're talking about. All right. So if we're going to graph y equals 4e to the 0.5x power, it looks all crazy and wild, but it's exactly what we just did. All right, it's exactly the same thing. This has a positive number in front of your e, and it has a positive exponent. So therefore, this is going to be an exponential growth fac uh, function. So it's going to go upward. So we just need two points. Remember, we need two points, and then we can graph it. So our first point is going to be, remember, um, 0, 4, because if we put in a 0 for x, then all of this goes away. It's just equal to 1, and 4 times 1 is just 1. So up 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's our first, our first point. And then the next point is put in 1 for x, and so then put into your calculator uh, 0.5, and then to the e, uh, use that e to the x power to get your next point, and that one is going to be... Um, 6.59. So you have 0, 4 is one point, and 1 and then 6.59 is your other point. So on these, it's okay to just kind of estimate. So you're going to go 1 over, and this is 4, 5, 6, and a half-ish. So there's a point here. And you know it's an exponential growth, so it's going to start close to this, close to this um, x-axis, and it's going to come up and it's going to go through those two points and then just go up. And that's all you do, okay? So find those two points and then know that it's either going to go up starting at the x-axis or it's going to come down and end at the x-axis, all right? Depending on, depending on your, your, um, your exponent. So your domain here is all real numbers and your range is going to be uh, y greater than the zero. All right, so far so good? Okay, so just check those two points. Now, of course I'm gonna make it more difficult because we can also shift that graph. So let's look at it if we, if we shift it. So what we're gonna do in this case, just like we did before, just like we did before, uh, when you're graphing something that looks all crazy and scary, ignore the H and K. So ignore that first. 
and just graph the two points that you would have without them. So you're going to start with the zero. If you put in zero for x, then that gives you just, ooh, just one. So you're going to start out with zero, one, and then you're going to go next to one, and then you're going to take one times negative 1.5, which is just negative 1.5. You do have to plug that into, into your, uh, your calculator. Negative 1.5, uh, and then your e to the x power, and I have it here somewhere. Oh dear, I hope I have it somewhere. All right, so here's what we've got, um, 0.22. So 1 over and then uh, 0.22, and that makes sense because looky here, this is coming downward, and my exponent is negative, so it is going to be an exponential decay. And so that's exactly what we wanted. Now what we're going to do is we're going to shift these two. We're going to go to the left two, because remember the H is opposite. Whew, all these things. Left two, down four. So from this point, we're going to go left two, down one, two, three, four. And so now this becomes the point negative two, negative three. And this one, what you can do here, uh, you're going to go to the left two, and that's easy, and then down one, two, three, four, and if you're kind of guesstimating it on your graph, that's fine, you can do that. Or what you can do is take that 0.22 and subtract four from it to get an actual number. And when you do that, you get, where did it go? Uh, so this point is negative one, negative 3.78, all right? And so then, and what I did here was I took the 0.22, which is this one, 1.22, and I took 0.22 minus 4 to get negative 3.78, all right? So now these two points create the two points of our, oh my goodness, we're doing this on this, like that. And so that's what your graph looks like. And remember your domain is all real. And your range, remains. Now remember your range is going to be the asymptote right here, all right? That we're almost to, but we're not going to cross. So this is negative one, two, three, four, negative four. So y is gonna be greater than negative four. And actually that uh, makes perfect sense because we're going to shift it down four. So there we go. So can you read that? Who knows? This says range is y greater than negative four. Okay? All right, so far so good. We've got graphing, we've got e, we've got all sorts of craziness. Now let's do some, um, let's do some algebraic expressions with this, with this e, because I just, algebra is much, the, using the algebraic functions to me is easier than graphing them because it's more specific. Um, now if you've got a graphing calculator, you can plug that in and then you can find that point on that graph and you can get specifically uh, a specific answer there. All right, here we go. So the way you would use these, uh, these natural base E is uh, in this case we've got annual sales, uh, annual sales of a company. They're creating a certain, uh, a certain product and their sales, they've determined that this is the um, this is the formula that you use to figure? Oh, and I didn't write it down. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Annual sales of a certain product can be modeled by this function. So what happens is, because this is a negative, we know this is going to be a decay. So what happens is, um, t is the number of years since the product went to market. When a product first comes out, uh, there's a lot of hype and a lot of thing. A lot of that product are bought. And then as the years go by, there's fewer and fewer of that product purchased because of different reasons. Either something newer comes out or uh, the, the market is saturated and uh, most people have this, uh, this object. For whatever reason, the, uh, the sales go down. And this is the formula that this company has found happens with their certain product. So all they wanna do in order to find, so S is the number of units sold, and T is the number of years since the product went to market. So they can find out, well, how many, what is the annual sales, how much are they, are they gonna sell after 
any certain number of years. And so we, what we want to know is, what are their annual sales of this product after six years? Well, in this case, you can either put this equation into your graphing calculator and then trace that graph until you get to six years, or you can simply put the six in for T and solve it. You can use your calculator to solve it. So let's do the 60,000 E to the negative 1.5 times 6 power. And so what you would do, oh, smudgy, what you would do is take negative 1.5 times 6, then take that answer and press your E to the X button. Take that answer times 60,000. And when you do all of that, you should end up with, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to round it. Oh, 24, not 4. And I've rounded it. I think it was 24, 390, something, something. So, um, so about 24,400 units will be sold after six years. All right. So that's how many they can expect to sell in the whole year, six years after they've, after they've gone to market. All right. So once again, it's just mostly just finding your, finding your equation and plugging in numbers. Let's do the same type of thing. We can use the E number to figure continuously compounded interest. Now, if you remember from section 7.1, we talked about compound interest and that compound interest, you, you remember, um, we compounded it, we decided how many times are we going to compound it per year and then we put that into the formula. Well, this looks very, very similar to, to our, where we get the, the concept of the E, right? So what happens is, as that number gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and continuously compounded is as big as you can get. That's compounding every minute, every second, all the time, all the time, continuously. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that E number instead of this part. In the, um, in the compound interest formula. So we're going to end up with a formula that says the, uh, the amount that you have is equal to the principal times E raised to the rate, to, uh, rate times time power. All right. So you have your pieces. All you do, this is another, this is any, uh, a, just a formula that you can just plug in the numbers. So in this case, what you would do is if you're going to deposit $3,000 that's your principal. So you would put in the 3,000, and I don't know if I have enough space here, so let me erase and do it over here. Oh. All right. So we're simply going to put in those numbers. So we've got 3,000 for P, so the amount equals 3,000. And then E, remember, is a it's a constant. Uh, e to the RT power, so rate is 0 0.035. Don't forget to change that to a decimal from a percent. Uh, and we want to know what is our balance after three years. So that becomes our T times three. So put into your calculator 0 0.035. Go ahead and do it right now and see if you get the same answer that I did. 0 0.035 times three. Take that answer and press your E to the X button. Take that answer times 3,000. And you should end up with $3,332.13. That's going to be, and that's, that's rounded to the nearest penny, uh, obviously, because we don't have uh, portions of pennies in the U.S. Okay, so if you deposit $3,000 at three and a half percent interest compounded continuously, then after three years, you're going to end up, if you just leave it in there, after three years, you're going to end up with $3,332.13. So today was a lot of, um, it's a lot of just plugging in numbers, making sure you know how to use your calculator, uh, make sure you know how to simplify with those E's. That's just going back and remembering how to simplify with any variable. All right. So it's, it's, uh, it's a lot the same thing that you've done, only just applying it a little bit differently. So you shouldn't have any trouble with it. If you do, give me a holler. I'll talk at you soon. Bye.